Welcome to week four of Who the Bleep Did I Marry? This week, we're talking about how to tighten the knot. Excited to dive in this together. So I remember like it was yesterday. It was June 17th, 2011. I was spending time with my fiance and we were so excited for what the next day would bring because it was our wedding day. And there was a 90% chance of rain guaranteed for, for our wedding day. And we were nervous, but excited. And some people came up to us and said, so what are you going to do if it rains? And we said, well, bring an umbrella because we're at our favorite place in the world, with our favorite people in the world. So we're gonna celebrate regardless. And sure enough, we wake up the next morning and there's a 0% chance of rain. It's 85 and sunny and just an amazing and beautiful day where we went to go tie the knot together. So everything didn't go perfect or as it would on Pinterest because really it was before Pinterest was a thing. But we had a great time, great day, and that day is where we became us. And we tied the knot. And I remember just so much joy and excitement and look back at pictures and of course we're like, oh man, we were just babies. And, but, uh, and I always just look at her and I'm like, wow, just, oh my gosh, so gorgeous and so beautiful. And, and uh, there's just so much joy with that, that idea of when we tied the knot. And that's just the beginning. They all, everyone always says in, in, when, you're, when you're at the wedding, oh, this is just the beginning. You know, the marriage is longer than just the wedding. And I never really considered that because, you know, the wedding day you spend so much time prepping for and, and money on and all the logistics and everything like that. But the marriage is what's the most important thing. And as an every day wake up with that excitement, like literally every day revisiting the excitement of your wedding day. And doing that's how you tighten your marriage. And as we tighten our marriage, we go cr closer with our spouse. Or the same, same idea, you're growing closer with your friends or you're growing closer with your significant other. And it's uh, that excitement that just drives us crazy and with, with just, um, just suspense or you're getting gussied up. And, but over time, we lose that. And I'm as guilty of that as anybody. But it's that idea of usness, and it's making time for what's important to you. So if you look at your checkbook, or you look at your bank account, you see how you spend your money, it's the same thing with how you spend your time. Are you really spending time and really pressing into and cherishing and, and just seeking after your, your spouse or your significant other with just like a reckless abandonment? to just want to spend time with them and want to see want to see them grow and flourish. And there's times that we, we lose that. And it says in Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine through 12, that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. So a knot is used to hold something together. Probably the most common thing we use knots for are our shoes or ropes. And it's very obvious when something's not that secure and or not that strong and, and it feels loose. And, and so when things feel loose, we feel insecure or we feel scared, we feel nervous or very timid. But when things are strong and you feel supported or you feel grounded, if you will, and, and that knot is super tight, you, you feel like you can take on anything because it's going to support you. And that's how we were designed to do relationships together. You were literally designed for community. The first thing God created was community, was, was the man, was the wife. You are not meant to do life, life alone. And that's what God wants for you. God wants to see you grow and wants to see you be successful in that. 
So that is what God is calling us to in our relationships. Ones that are immovable, unshakable, and not easily broken. So dream with me for a moment. What would it look like if your marriage, your relationship would be tightened? What would it look like to think about the legacy that you leave to your kids or your grandkids about your marriage? What can you do to tighten the knot? What can you do to create the usness? Maybe it's a date night. Maybe it's literally you pop popcorn and watch Netflix. Or maybe it's that you go for a walk, you go for a run, you go on a vacation, whatever it is. It's, it's being intentional about pursuing the one that you gave your life to. It's the one who every day that you're not only looking at your wedding ring as a gift that was given, but a gift that you gave. And that gift that you give every single morning is yourself, is your attention and your intentionality to say, I love you, I cherish you, I respect you, I need you. And, it, and it's the little things. It's leaving, leaving, the, leaving the post-it notes all around the house. It's, it's leaving the little notes. It's packing the lunch, it, whatever it is. It's finding that love language of your spouse to make them to make them feel like a million bucks. And when we do that, and when you tighten up that usness that God's designed you for, what could happen? So I'm encourage you with that today to tighten the knot, to go after your spouse, to go after your significant other, to go after those relationships in your in your life that God has positioned you for and it's pressing into them and leaning into them. So let's pray together and it'll dive together into group time. So Lord, thank you for today. I just thank you that you've designed us for community. I thank you that you've designed us for each other. And we just pray for all the spouses right now, God. Would you just strengthen their usness, God? Would you just strengthen their love for each other? And for those who are, who are hurting, or who have lost a loved one, Lord, I just pray for healing. And God, that you would just resurrect the dead, the dead parts of their life. And God, that you would just fill them with hope and with joy, God, and with your presence, Father. Lord, we just love you so much. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen.